Hello guys, so welcome to KO Tutorials. So here I am coming up with a small tutorial on standard lights. So we will be going through some standard lights over here in 3ds Max. So let's get started. So let's go into this lights. You can go into the standard. We get all the standard lights. So we have a concept over here for standard lights. So very first of all, we use a concept that is your three point lighting. That's your basic concept. So first is your key light, second is your fill light and third is your rim light or you can say a back light. So what is key light? So basically your key light is your primary light, you can say a basic source of light which is the brightest among all. So that's your key light which we mostly use not only in 3D but also we use it in a normal shoot also we use it. Second is your fill light. So fill light is something like which is uh, which is kept on the opposite side of the camera we can say and it fills the shadows that key lights creates on the scene. Also the third one is your rim light. So rim light you can say uh, a rim light is a source of light which is kept behind the subject we can say it separates the subject from there. So that's your rim light. So first is your key light, fill light and rim light. These are your main basically three lights. We mostly use it over here. So it also creates a rim in the on the sides of the subject we can say. So let's get started. So very first of all, I'll just take a plane over here. I'll take a teapot for example over here. So I'll just give a basic standard material. So let's go into the standard. So whenever you are going to start up with the standard materials or standard lights, we'll be using over here as scan line render. So let's go into this. Let's take some architectural materials over here. So let's give something like a ceramic tiles over here. And I'll go into this diffuse bitmap and I'll assign some kind of a texture over here if required. So you can assign some texture. You can assign some flow texture if you have. So I'll just assign it. Alright, so let's go over here and reduce the shininess. Select this teapot and I'll just assign again a shader to it. So I'll just assign. You can give any kind of a paint flat shader. So when you are starting up with this light, let's take a Omni. So Omni is considered as a point light, you can see a kind of a light which illuminates in all directions. So let's take one Omni over here, I'll just assign. So we'll be going through standard lights and different parts over here. So I'll just slightly push this up, the light over here. After that, Let's go into this and you get some parameters over here. So whenever you add up one light, so let's just name it as a key light over here. Let's go into the intensity. Intensity is your light intensity or multiplier we can say. So I'll activate this so you can see I don't have a temperature option over here. I can see you can increase decrease the intensity of the light. You can give the light color also if required. So for example, let's give a light color. Let's give any color to the light. After that, you have one more option over here. That's your shadow. So you can activate the shadows also over here. So different different kinds of shadows over here. We can utilize it. So right now we'll be going through some 
shadow map that's a normal shadow map we use it over here so if you're using some kind of a glass material then we can utilize some ray trace shadows also where you get different kind of uh, you can say the glass material has a lighter shadow so we can utilize this ray trace shadow for it let's go into this your DK so DK is like something like you get the same intensity but the light intensity is same but the area spreading of the light is less inverse square is much lesser than this if you see over here so let's go into rendering and you can just render and see inverse again you can render it and none so you see the highest intensity you can increase the intensity of the lights over here Second thing is your near attenuation and far attenuation. How far your light should go from a particular point from where it is emitted. So you can define this near and far attenuation for any light. So let's just render and see how it looks like. So I'm rendering this. If I reduce it more and again I render it, you can see I cannot see the object. Again, I'll reduce the end for the far so, and again, I'll increase this far. Let's again render it. So as soon as I increase this far option, we'll slowly see that it's totally visible over here. So you can increase this near and far attenuation of light for any of the lights in this standard lights. After that, you have some parameters over here for the light that is your contrast that can also be added. So let's just render it. I'll increase the contrast of the light. You can see there will be a bit of contrast. You can soften the diffuse edge of the that can be done. If you're working with a specular, if you're only using ambient then you will see that you will get a flat surface because that is totally ambient. Ambient will give you a flat surface. If you off this specular and if you render it, you will not see any kind of specular on the teapot. So this is known as a specular. Specular can be a bit of shine caused due to light. Specular can be arranged on the material also. After that, you have option that's your projector map will be going through that. So if you select this and if I go into this and if I want to add a map over here, if I want to add a map, I can add a map. That's your projector map. So if you want to add a map in the light, you will see that the light is emitting. But with that, you are also getting some kind of map over here that's known as your projector map so projector map can be added in this way so you can right click and clear it you can add any kind of a map and if you render it you will see that you will see a projector map so as it is a point light you can see your omni light is it is forming in a round shape so in a simple terms I can say omni light works just like a bulb light so if i talk about a bulb light so bulb emits in all direction the light emits in all the directions 360 degree so that's how the omni light works i'll go over here i'll just clear it i'll off this map and again <coughs> i can see this so this this subject is totally for absolute beginners after that you have some shadow parameters now what is the use of shadow over here it's like shadow gives you a bit of depth for example if you off the shadow you will see that there is uh, you won't come to know that where the object is placed it's looking in the air so shadow will give you a bit of depth so definitely if you are uh, using light then definitely you should have a shadow so 
In this application, we can control the shadows also. That's a good thing over here. After that, you have a dense option over here. If you reduce the dense over here, you will see that the shadow will become much lighter. So you can make the shadow lighter with the help of this dense option. So I'll just make it as one. You can change the color of shadow if required. That can be done if you require it. After that, you have a shadow map as you had projector map. We also have a map over here. We can also add a map in the shadow. So for example, if you want a map in the shadow, I can add a map in the shadow also. You will see there is a shadow. There is a map that's an image in the shadow. That can also be utilized over here. Atmospheric shadows, you can activate that also. You can render it. All right. This is your shadow map parameters. This is like, for example, if you have a shadow map size is 512. And if you make it as 50 over here, and if you render it, you will see that the quality of the shadow map is reduced because of this. You can increase this map size over here. You can make it to two sided shadows. I'll just keep it right now as 512 only over here. That's it. So till now I just keep this section over here in this way. So this is your key light which I have placed over here. I'll off this near and far attenuation. So if you off it then your light will go uh, at immense level over here. So you don't have any control over the light. So if you want to control it, you can utilize this option that how far my light should go. We can adjust it using this uh, near attenuation and far attenuation. So that is what we utilize it for all the lights. All right. So guys, if any doubts, please put it in the comment section over here. So definitely I'll be coming up with one more part with it for the standard lights. So we'll be going through some series of standard lights for this absolute beginners and also for some uh, technical things for learning for some intermediate levels as well. So if any doubts, please put it in the comment section over here. So. We will continue the rest of the part in the next tutorial. So please like and subscribe my YouTube channel. So thanks for watching this tutorial.